Arise. In practically any programming or scripting language, you'll come across arrays. Arrays are simply a variable that can hold more than one value, and arrays can be populated with values either at the start of your script, or they can be dynamically populated whilst your script is running. So to put it in plain English, arrays are just basically lists of data. Now imagine that you have a blank shopping list with 10 lines on it that you can fill in. Now each of those 10 lines you could write in a product that you need to buy when you go shopping, and each of these 10 lines is called an element. Now one of the first things you need to understand when dealing with arrays is that unlike our shopping list that we have here which has 10 items or elements numbered from 1 to 10, in an array those same 10 elements will be listed from 0 through to 9 rather than 1 to 10. And that's because arrays start at 0, not 1. So we still have the same amount of elements which of course is 10 but it now starts at 0 and goes through to 9. So now we can populate our array with values and we have a fully populated array which is known as a one dimensional array. But what if we needed to further dissect our list here and categorize it by who needs us to go and buy this product? Now we'd need to work with an extra dimension in our array or in other words a two dimensional array. So in a two dimensional array just like where our elements in the array started at zero our first column becomes column 0 and the second column becomes column 1. So our first dimension here has two elements 0 to 1 and our second dimension has 10 elements 0 through to 9. Now before you can start using arrays they must be declared in your script you can't just start populating an array with values because at the present time it doesn't actually exist. So to declare an array like we've just talked about with our shopping list, we'll need to specify 10 elements for the first dimension and 2 elements for our second dimension. And we'd do that like this. Now here we've used the dim statement and called our array ARR shopping so that we can easily identify what this array is being used for. You can of course call it whatever you like, but make it a meaningful name because that's much better for you in the long run. Okay, next we've specified how many elements we want in the array, which is 2 in the first dimension and 10 in the second dimension. Remember that the numbering will start from 0, so the first dimension is set to 1, which will hold 2 elements, and the second is set to 9, and that will hold 10 elements. Again, they always start at 0, so if you remember anything from this video, make sure that you understand that arrays start at 0 and not 1. Okay well here's our array again and notice that I have several values in the array from 3 to 9 that are not populated with values. So let's take a look at how we could put data into our array. Okay well so far we don't have a name next to carrots so in our shopping list we'll need to add who the carrots that we're buying are for. So we need to reference our array then specify where in the array we want the data to be added. So in this case if we have a look at our columns the spot where we want our data to be stored is in column 1. Now in the corresponding row we already have carrots populated so down in our first dimension here we have element number 3 which is our carrots so we'll need to reference element 3. You could think of this the same way that you would reference cells in a spreadsheet A1, B2 and so on when you're writing up formulas. So here we simply need to find out the cross reference location of where the data should go which is 1 comma 3. So to populate our array here we can do this by first referencing the array and then specifying the correct location which is column 1 row 3 and then we'll simply equal that to whatever value we like which in this case we've used the name Alex. Now to get this data back out of our array we could simply call it in much the same way. So here's a little example piece of code we could use to retrieve our data. We could use the message box command to pop up a box showing us the value simply by using code like this. Now we've specified the array with the values of 1, 3 which is now set to Alex now because my line of code here 
is longer than a single line, I've added in the ampersand and underscore, which simply tells VBScript that the next line is a continuation of this line and not a new one. So it will join whatever happens to appear on the next line with this one. Now next we've added in some text of our own and some quotation marks. And then finally, we'll need to specify what product we need to purchase. So again, we'll need to retrieve the value of column zero and row three. Now when we run this code, the result will be popped up in a message box and it'll display Alex wants some carrots. So let's go to our scripting program and let's see this in action. Okay, so the first thing we'll need to do to get this script to work is to declare our array. And we'll do that by using the dim statement and then giving our array a name. Now next we've specified how many elements we want in the array, which is two in our first dimension. And of course, that's 10 in our second dimension. Remember that the numbering will start from zero. So the first dimension is set to one, which will hold two elements. And the second is set to nine, and that will hold 10 elements. Okay, well, our array is currently empty at this stage, and I won't go through and add in everything just yet from our shopping list. We'll just add in the two values that we're concerned with. So we'll need to reference the array again, and then the location in the array where we want to add data. So since we're concerned with adding in Alex, who wants carrots in our shopping list, we'll need to reference the spot in our array where we want Alex to appear, which is in the second column in our shopping list in the fourth spot. Remembering again that we start at zero, so the correct location will be one comma three. Now next we'll do the same here for the carrots in our shopping list. And finally, down the bottom here, we'll add in the final line that produces the message box and retrieves the values from the array. All right, now, if we go to our command prompt and run our script here, you can see that when it runs, it pops up a message box and pulls the values from our array. And there you can see the correct result, which is Alex wants us to buy him some carrots when we go shopping. All right, now, the next thing I wanna to touch on in this video on arrays is what happens when you have more data than an array will hold. Now in our shopping cart example, we have 10 items in our shopping list and we've created a dimension that contains 10 elements. But what happens if we need to add a couple more items to our shopping list? Okay, we'll go back to our scripting editor here and I have another script here. Now in this example, we've created our array, but this time notice that I've not specified at the top here how big our array is going to be. We've simply declared the array but we've used these open and closed parentheses. Now this is how we can declare a resizable array. Now on this next line here, I've used the redim statement and set our array to contain 10 elements. Now following this, if we scroll down a little bit here, you can see our 10 elements that we saw in our shopping list earlier. Now I will point out ahead of time that this isn't the only method of populating our array with values, and in a moment I'll show you how to do it all on a single line. Okay, now if we wanted to add a new item to our list here, we can do this by again issuing the redim statement, but notice here that I've added in the preserve keyword. You see, when you resize an array, the contents of the array will be emptied. So by using this preserve keyword, this tells VB to retain whatever is inside our array. So here we've resized our array to 10, which of course now has 11 elements. So next we've set the last item in our array to coffee. And finally, we're gonna show a message box showing us the 10th and the 11th items in our array, which should be tomatoes and coffee. Okay, well let's go to our command prompt and we'll run our script here, which I've simply called redim. All right, and there's our first pop-up message box showing us tomatoes. So we'll click on OK. And there's our second pop-up message box showing coffee, which of course is the last element in our array, the element we just added after we resized the array. Now as an aside, let's just go back to our script here and we'll remove this preserve keyword from the script 
and we'll run it again. Remember that the preserve keyword is used to retain whatever was inside our array before we resized it. So by removing this keyword, and I'll just save this script, we should have nothing in the array except the new item that we just added, which of course is coffee. So let's go and run our script again. And this time, our first pop-up message box is empty, showing us that our array up to the first 10 elements is totally empty. So we'll click on OK again, and there's our final element of coffee. All right, now I also promised to show you another way of adding items to an array, so let's go and take a look at another version of the same script that I have here. Now in this example, I've dimmed a variable called AR shopping, but we've not yet set it to be an array. Now we'll do that on the next line where we use the array keyword. And in the parentheses, we've added in all of the shopping list items separated by a comma. Now what we've done here is actually convert several strings into an array. Then we've used the redim statement with the preserve keyword to resize our array so that we can again add coffee to the list. And finally, we'll display our message boxes like we did before. Okay, so let's go and run this script. We'll go back to our command prompt and we'll run redim2 and we'll hit enter. And again, we get a pop-up message which shows us the 10th element in our array, which is tomatoes. And we'll click OK and we can see that coffee is now the final element in our array. All right, well, there you've seen two different ways of adding values into a resizable array. Now let's look at another way of converting strings into array. So let's go and consider this example. All right, this time we have a simple string containing four items from our shopping list. Next, we've created a new variable, arrstr, and we've used the split command to split our string here on the comma that separates each item. Now next, we'll produce a message box to show us the fourth item in our new array, which of course should be carrots. So we'll go back to our command prompt and we'll run our script here. Then again, we get our pop-up message which shows us the last element in our array, which of course is carrots. So that was a quick and easy way of converting a string to an array. Now we can go the other way, of course, and convert an array into a string. Okay, so back to our scripting editor here. Now this time we've created an array with three elements and then added the values of bread, milk, and apples. So to convert these three array elements into a string, we can use the join statement. So here we're joining whatever is inside our ARR shopping array and we'll separate those elements by a comma. And finally again, we'll display a message box that shows our new string. All right, well, let's go back to our command prompt and we'll run string1.vbs. And again, we'll get our pop-up message, which now shows us the contents of the string. And that, of course, contains all three elements that were in our array of bread, milk, and apples. Okay. In this video, we've talked quite a bit about arrays. Later in this video series, we're going to talk more about arrays using loops so we can run through all elements of an array without having to know how many elements are actually inside of it. Arrays are one of the most common things you'll work with in practically any programming or scripting language, so I'd encourage you to work through the examples that were presented in this video and watch it again if you need to.